This is Phil Chandler and I've just taken my first swarm of the season, which is unusually late for this area, uh, nearly middle of Mar uh, uh, March, M nearly the middle of May, which is late for, for Devon. Um, I'm up on Dartmoor, uh, the, the lower reaches of, uh, of, the da of Dartmoor, and um, in this apiary I'm going to house the swarm that I took uh, just half an hour ago, and it's wrapped up here. Here they are. We can unwrap them. A decent sized prime swarm that I've popped into a skep. And you can see they're quite dark bees mostly. They're, there's a little bit of stripiness amongst them, but they're local mongrels, let's say, um, with a good strong piece, a bit of uh, native genetics. So I'm very happy to take them and put them into this hive. I've, they're only, I've only moved them literally probably a mile from where I put, took the swarm. So I'm hoping that uh, they're gonna be happy enough here that, I, that uh, they'll stay and not try to abscond and find somewhere else. It's a, it's a blustery day up here on the moor uh, today. So I'm going to feed the bees. And I don't usually do that with prime swarms, but I'm going to this time um, for two reasons. One is that uh, it will help them uh, settle in. It will give them a, a, a supply of food to help them settle in and, and reduce their uh, tendency to, uh, to, to abscond. Um, and also it will give them uh, a bit of extra uh, boost to, uh, to build comb because the first thing they've got to do, of course, when, they, when bees go into a new home is to, is to build comb. Now they've got mostly bare bars. There's a couple of bars here somewhere that have got a bit of comb on. Here, here you go, this one. Um, it's always good to have a, 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 at least one comb with a bit of wax on, I find, just to give them a start. It just gives them a strong hint as to where you want them to build comb. I could actually take an empty comb out of, uh, out of another hive. In fact, I, I might do that if I can find one. Uh, I'm gonna have a look in one of these hives here. I might be able to smuggle one out of this one. Let's have a look. Uh, fairly old comb in here let's have a look okay well that one's a bit odd but yeah let's give them that one okay see these guys have built themselves um, plenty of comb in here and so they can spare this one which is a kind of odd looking piece of comb um, in fact it's got a, a stick embedded in it from from some repair work that I did a, you know, who knows how many years ago um, just gonna put that back together I'm going to take this comb. This is really just to give them a, a focus for attention, somewhat, somewhere to cluster on. Um, it's not essential by any means. And if you don't have um, comb to start off with, then don't worry about it. They'll, they'll figure it out for themselves. But if you have got comb, I think it's not a bad idea to put one in to get them going. Anyway. <clears throat> The process is, well, you can see this has got an eco floor in it. It's uh, oak chips in the bottom. And um, I've actually dampened them because they had dried out a bit over winter. Uh, so that's all ready to go. I've left a gap, as you can see, uh, of about, I guess, 10, 10 bars wide, 10, maybe 12 bars wide, something like that. This is a good sized swarm. And I want to just shake them in in one go without any big fuss or drama. So I want to shake them in and then put the bars over the top of them and uh, trust that they'll be okay, which I'm sure they will. First of all, so I'm going to put in a bag of sugar. And so we're going to do the same thing as we did previously with a bag of sugar, which is to put some holes in it, this time with a pair of scissors, because that's what I happen to have handy. Uh, we're going to drop that into the bucket of water. Excuse me, I've got a bee trying to get up my sleeve here. I'm just gonna take her out. Here we go. Right, so we put it in a bucket of water and get it a bit squidgy. Get some water in there, get some bubbles coming up. And then we can put that in the bottom of the hive, somewhere there, it's just right. And then we can shake the bees in there onto the sugar and they'll, uh, they'll make use of it. Okay, so uh, I don't have any with you with me today, so I, I'm going to have to do this myself and hope, <laughs> hope there aren't any disasters. Uh, huh. Good. 
I think I'm going to move this bucket of water because that is pretty much guaranteed to cause a disaster. I've got a piece of Reflectix here to go on top of them. It's kind of a battle against the wind at the moment because the wind's trying to close the hive, uh, close the lid down and it's going to put bees in the air if I'm not careful. Put the water there to stabilise the lid. Right, here we go. So the, the way I take, the way I use a skep um, for catching swarms is, as you've seen, I'm sure in my other videos, um, I turn the skep over onto the bees. Because it contains them, it encloses them very quickly into the, into the space of the skep. And also I can prop up one side as an entrance. I'm just struggling a bit here because I'm trying to pick this up carefully so as not to create a, a massive uh, bee escape. There's a rock in there which I used as an entrance block. So I'm going to take the, the sheet out, get that out of the way, shake the bees off it. Right, now all the bees are, I don't know whether you can see this, the bees are hanging inside the skep. I'm going to turn it like this, I have no idea what you can see right now, but you should see a basket full of bees hanging from the roof. So I'm going to literally shake them off the roof straight into the hive. And Okay, so that's balanced now. Let's see if we can let's see if we can video this. <clears throat> okay, here we go. There we are. There is a hive full of bees. And I'm going to get top bars in here straight away. Because what I want to do is create a nice dark space for them. They're very calm and chilled out bees, these. Although one of them did sting my ear. Um, okay, so here we go. And there, here's the rest of the bees in the basket still. So I've got to get them out and we'll do that. I think I'm going to have to put the camera down for this. Okay. Right, empty skep. I'll put some more bars in here. Take some from the other end. I'm just going to shuffle things up now. So what I want is just a small gap. That's not the follower. Or a couple of small gaps is okay. We want to get bees um, fanning and you can see here his bees fanning right on the edge they've got their tails in the air wings going and they're fanning the scent from their Nazanov gland which is on the tip of the tail that's their homing instinct and you can see immediately other bees start to run towards the gap and some of them will take up the uh, the job of fanning as they as they turn over the edge here there we go and this is how we know that the queen is at home, all is well, the bees are happy for that to have a new home, as far as we can tell. And they are very keen to draw in the few bees that are in the air here. There's a few in the air, there's one on my neck, which just stung me. Thank you. So the bees, the flying bees will pick up the scent of the colony and they will find their way in quite quickly. So all's well, and hopefully these bees will stay put and they will thrive. They will tuck into the sugar. Um, and there's a bunch here on the outside, you can see at the entrance. Uh, when I shook them in, they probably a few, few spilled out of the entrance. And what you will notice here, and, and this is a mistake on my part, can you see there's a bit of a gap here along between the uh, eco floor 
um, container, which is uh, industrial guttering, and the woodwork, and that needs tightening up. We don't want gaps like that, because that's where wasps will find a way in later on in the year, and we definitely don't want wasps in our hive. So the, uh, the cure for that is to tighten up these straps here, which I will do in due course, probably not right now, um, but that gap needs closing. So there we are, bees uh, finding their way in and we can gradually close this gap up properly. Not just yet because of course there's bees in the gap, but uh, once they're all in we can, we can spray them down a little bit and uh, the stragglers will go in and join the others. These bees are well adapted to this area, they've been living here for a number of years, I don't know exactly how many because the uh, the the mother colony, if you like, of this one, um, although, of course, because this, the queen came with the swarm, you can call this the mother colony, but you know what I mean. The colony this, this, uh, this colony came from um, has been living in the hive it's currently in for several years, to my knowledge, and uh, prior to that, it was a random swarm that, that just found the hive, so they've been living in this valley for well, who knows how long. Maybe 10, maybe 20, maybe 100 years, who knows. So that's, uh, that's really the reason I wanted to keep them in the valley. I didn't want to take them to another location, although I could have done. I could have taken them to one of my other apiaries, but <clears throat> I really wanted to keep them uh, where they know, the area they know. There's lots of wildflowers here. You can see there's a few around the edge of this field here. But this field, in fact, is uh, entirely un, um, how should we say, uncultivated, unsprayed, untouched in, in many ways. It's really conservation area, uh, which has been set up for the conservation of, uh, well, multiple wild animals, but uh, especially ground nesting birds. And uh, so it's an ideal spot for, for bees to be. So we don't want to overload any given area with bees for sure. And uh, every time I come up here, I see bumblebees flying around and there's plenty of habitat here for wild bees as well as the, um, the hived honeybees. And I do make, I do create habitat as well where I can and uh, try to enhance it because we do want as many different species of uh, pollinators as we can as we can hang on to these days. So I consider myself very lucky to have an apiary in such um, surroundings. Uh, I've got a lot of woodland over the back and uh, over the hedge here there's a, 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 grazing, a field of grazing and then beyond that there's more woodland so um, and lots of hedgerows everywhere of course and that's what that's what makes this area such a great place for bees. I'm uh, battling the elements a bit here, but I'm just using a water spray to uh, get the bees heads down between the bars and um, so I can close up, just leaving a uh, sort of six to eight mil gap there. Or a quarter of an inch for our American friends. The, the folk tale is that um, when bees are swarming that they're universally gentle and um, unlikely to sting you. I mean, that is, as anyone who's collected more than a couple of swarms know, that is pretty much a lie. <laughs> um, well, it's not entirely a lie, but it's, it's an exaggeration of the truth, shall we say. Um, by and large, when bees are swarming, they are pretty gentle by comparison, but um, that doesn't mean that all the bees in that swarm are going to be loving and kind and gentle and sweet. <clears throat> There's always a couple that just decide that you are the enemy and uh, will try to sting you. There's been some discussion about smoke versus water sprays. Um, somebody asked, uh, has smoke always been used to control bees? And my reply was, probably the reason that smoke's been used for so long is because it's uh, readily available. It's easy enough to make smoke. If you can make fire, you can make smoke. And uh, of course, in the early days of beekeeping, um, things like this <laughs> weren't available. <laughs> it's only really in the 20th century with the advent of plastics and uh, 
the, the sort of technology that, that can create things like this easily and cheaply, that we have had the ability to, to make uh, a, a fine a fine mist spray like this with a with a with a simple and cheap device smoke has, has persisted because uh, it's still readily available and easy more or less to use um, personally I find smoke to be a nuisance uh, keeping a smoker lit is uh, a challenge um, that I uh, would sooner be without frankly there's plenty of other things in life to create challenges without having to battle with smokers. Um, so I'm very happy to use a water spray. Now, if you decide that you'd rather use a smoker, then great, use a smoker. And uh, good luck with keeping it alight. Um, and also don't try not to breathe the, uh, the noxious fumes it gives off because pretty much whatever you burn in a smoker, uh, it's going to create smoke that you really shouldn't be inhaling, uh, which is really why I gave it up. Um, I stopped using smokers, well, pretty much while I was working at Buckfast Abbey back in the, uh, what was it, 04, 05. I found that uh, standing around all day inhaling smoke from a smoker was not my idea of fun. So here we are, as our swarm has been hived, there's a little cluster on the outside here. I'm not quite sure what to do yet. They'll figure it out. I must remember to close up this gap between the uh, eco floor and the side walls of the hive because we don't want to allow wasps to get in there later on. We don't want the bees using it as an unofficial entrance either. From a uh, unseasonably cool and blustery Dartmoor, I shall say farewell and uh, as I say see you in the next video which isn't actually of course true because I won't be seeing you, you'll be seeing me but you know what I mean. Okay thanks and please like and subscribe and all those things down there and uh, I'll see you again soon. Bye bye.